Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meticulous Talks for July 7th. I am Rosa Court. And I'm Heathrock. And uh, welcome to July. Summer going well, Heathrock? Uh, it could be better, I'll be honest. <laughs> I was actually just looking up the weather before you showed up, and I think I would love to trade places with you. Um, your, uh, your weather forecast looks good. It's hot. No, well, last week was actually pretty good because it was it was raining. It was like 13 degrees Celsius, but right now it's hot. It's only like 20 degrees Celsius for you. Yeah, that's hot. Like I'm sweating right now. Ugh. I'm OK. You and I have e even different opinions on that. It's like 30 degrees <laughs> here right now, and I I'd say it's... I would gladly take 20. Yes. Yeah, I don't want 30. 30 is like... killing. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We have a friend in California where it's uh, presumably even hotter. But in any event, uh, over the course of basically the time since our last stream, uh, there has been funny cards going on all over the place. Uh, there has been... Literally. Some Harmony, some Core, some of this new Defender's Block thing that happened recently. Uh, yeah, and so... Let's talk about what happened. We're not going to go through, we're not going to have any structure to it really, as is our want. We're kind of just going to talk about whichever decks caught our eye as it's going to be worth mentioning. Sometimes they'll be the winning decks, sometimes they'll be creative stuff that was part of the list. Whatever. Yeah. My overall impression there isn't too much new stuff there. Like, looking through all the decks, it's pretty much either the decks we already saw, and, yeah, like, either at the previous tournaments or they were talked about. Mm -hmm. That's my general impression. Yeah, we're about, uh, let me see here, Fence Forever was the start of the year. And I, I, I can't say we're midway through the season unless we know when the next set's going to happen, so... Uh, but probably yeah. around getting to the end, getting close to the second half. So it's not surprising that things have developed somewhat. People have a generally good sense of what's good right now. People have um, built decks that they like and are going to keep on playing, probably. Um, mm -hmm. As uh, I've been spending the last week or so looking at the trends and basically getting all the data together, for uh, the video post probably this afternoon. So I can at least give you a preview of which decks um, are doing very well in, uh, in that regard. Um, and I was struck most actually in core by uh, Cheese's uh, Tempest White Pink deck, which we've talked about several times, but it is coming out of this, this weekend. Looking mm -hmm. Uh, winning in uh, Santa Clara, winning in Richmond, and uh, generally, see if anyone did badly with it or else. I guess. Yeah, it seems like a good color combination, and it's basically a continuation of BRB, so. Yeah, uh, we mentioned uh, it uh, before, but that's. Not entirely surprising that it's uh, it's been keeping on the legacy. Mm -hmm. I suppose uh, Eugle built something new for uh, Denver, right? His silver stream white deck. Uh, yeah. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this before from Beagle at least. Let me just throw it off you.
I mean, yeah. In in, in general, it's it's, uh, it's got kind of the hallmarks of the deck. Uh, Castle of Friendship is almost becoming like one of the cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had that in his uh, Ambassador Blue White, as well as some other cards from here, like Stygian. It, it's probably, and I believe he said something like once or twice before, that Stygian is one of the cards that basically allows Castle to be good. Mm-hmm. I mean, AT Gen without purple is pretty good. Pretty much the only option you have, especially in this color. Yeah, and uh, it's like uh, pink and white. If, if you want to do control, well, if you ever try to play control without AT Gen, you generally end up missing it. Um, but these colors definitely do miss it a lot since you've got a lot of expensive cards like Party of One, Sneeze, play it. Um, mm hmm. This main to the extent that it is. Yeah. But this is not a strictly controlled deck, though. It's mid rangey. At least it that's it seems like that to me. Like it's it's not a heavy control, but it's not like it, I can't really call this aggro. This is not an aggro. Mm, no, absolutely. This is the general trend for pretty much all the decks right now, as far as I can see. Heavy control is just too slow, and everything else that is not an aggro, I would call it mid branch. Probably. It's something that I've been, yeah, grappling with too. What exactly is what you can call control these days? Because this is, yeah, as you say, this isn't control the way we're used to thinking about it. But is this just what it looks like these days, etc.? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, all this mid probably. Yeah, but this is just semantics. Absolutely. Okay, well, what else is there? In terms of decks or this deck? Uh, either one. <laughs> well, one, one card I wanted to mention, which we don't really see often, often is Opalescent. Mm -hmm. And I really like this card. But not many people play it. And it's kind of like Napcakes in terms that it removes everything that's to less power. And a lot of things have that much power. So, pretty good. Yeah, you know, I was actually just thinking about it. People talk about the combo of Napcakes with uh, the Starlight, who makes everyone have power. The combo with Opal is so something. It's yeah, popped into my head. I don't. I believe I've uh, ever seen like that. Uh, I mean, look at this deck. All but three, uh, all but two cards have two or less power. Also, it deals pretty, pretty good against Miss Mine. If someone leaves Miss Mine on the field, you can just banish that with, with Opal. Of course, you'd have to protect Opal, but that's like one layer, one extra layer for them to get through to get their mislaid. Absolutely. Sometimes you get that uh, chaos text too. Mm hmm. And it's also worth noting, I guess, that, uh, I mean, I, I, we, we see tender taps a lot in these pink white decks these days. Uh, it is capable of hitting everything in the deck. Uh, Miss Main, who obviously will get out of the discard pile her own way. Yeah. So. Well, I guess save other tender. Mm hmm. And pretty much every card is useful. Like, I would return pretty much any friend from the discard pile. The ones that don't have good enters play abilities. Uh, Will have great um, 
staying power on the board. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you just want to pull back a shot, keep you have a belly block target. That's still fine too. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Sure. One? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of Bluna decks, so I think we should pick one of those. Okay, from the Harmony? Uh, sure. Or... The list I have opened is Harmony only and problems pretty much. <laughs> I see. Uh, which ones? This is. Uh... Yeah, no, there's a lot of Bluna decks. I, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> okay, let me just pull one of the. So I have TJ from Indiana, or right, Illinois, probably. I think. I don't know exactly right. Play. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, I think I have one from Illinois. Okay. By TJC. TJC. Okay, perfect. I'll just pull that up. There. There's a little balloon in that group. It's like three top decks or Bluna. Yeah, actually, the one we'll, uh, we'll get to maybe after the one, the uh, the third place one from Jacob S. One that I was thinking of. Yes, it was a very uh, interesting list. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it's Singleton, isn't it? It's a uh, Singleton, yeah. But anyway, oh my god, TJ is first. Hot wings. Uh, yeah. Good old hot wings. Uh, With even... 48 cards. That's right. It means there's something here that's not new. Is it the lilies? I've seen lilies in hot wings before. Like, she's a pretty good entry in hot wings next. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's new. Uh Joyce Pony maybe? Oh Joyce Pony yeah. what was it stable? Yeah. No, it was like Hot Wings was before Sequestria, so Yeah, jo oh oh Joyce Pony, right. That's yeah, right. not Holiday Spirit, no. Uh yeah, it could be, I guess. I actually because uh, uh, Yeah? Yeah, yeah, for what it's worth. We talk about new cards and as de cards that weren't in the original build of the deck. Yeah. Uh, Doi's Pony's only sequester card. No Friends Forever cards. It's quite an old build. Yeah, I believe there's just like a couple of uh, dates made for the new bands. Like we see Pinky's present in place of Berry Punch and Earth's Roll. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's a Hot Wings deck with Joy's Pony. And I would honestly probably cut John Lewis Pony so it can stay in, within 35 cards. I think there's enough entry here. And if there's not enough entry, I'd probably cut Cadence. Uh, let's see here. We are starting transitions, so. Really. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it's possible that. Uh, was playing this and felt he needed a little bit more card draw. Maybe that's what the Joyce Ponies are for. Oh, yeah. This deck doesn't have Gabby in it. So, yeah, I guess card draw is useful. Because I've seen some lists that run Gabby to solve the problem of card draw when you run out of cards to play. Yeah. Gabby, of course, we're talking about the super rare um, mm -hmm. that draws you up to a four, I think. Yep. At the end of the turn, if you have less than four, draw up to four. Yeah, that's a pretty good card. An attack like this, absolutely. And then, yes, as you mentioned, the, harmony, the problem deck is looking pretty harmony, which is something we don't mm -hmm. see a lot these days, even in the harmony decks. Uh, but... All right, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's big thanks to the fact that 
there's actually a lot of good uh, uh, blue pink problems out there with with low confront requirements and high bonus, which is exactly what Hot Wings wants to have. Mm -hmm. Like most of these problems, you just play a friend, move blue, and you're already confronting it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I just looking at them, the the ratio of uh, bonus points to confront requirements is pretty ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Given that we've got, yeah, we've got a good mixture of uh, blue and pink. We've got the big set of multicolor friends that we'll be playing all the time. Uh, even these mismatched color requirements here. Will usually not be a problem, as you say. Do not always yep. handles the blue, and not enough pink. Any of our pink friends will be. But even Soren, or something, probably has a little bit higher. Yep. Okay. All right. So, shall we talk about this Singleton deck? Sure. I, I, I hope this goes up properly on the... No, uh, this is going to get cut off. Anyway. Uh, so on screen, you're seeing up to the gummy. Uh, there's still... Like that's, half. Yeah, that's like half. As many cards there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So... I I'll post the link in chat, so... Yeah, yeah, that works. Uh, I'm not logged in in Twitch. OK, you can talk for now. <laughs> OK. So uh, we've kind of got a little bit of everything here. I definitely struggled to classify this uh, when I was putting it into Tia. Uh, I have it down as Luna, orange, yellow, and a little bit of orange, and a little bit of yellow in there. Uh, mid range, and I, 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 I think mid range is the correct choice. Like the blue stuff is pretty uh, aggro. But yeah, also. I mean it's like the friends are all aggro. Like this is what I would call aggro. But then you scroll down and you see everything else, and you're not sure anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like Nightmare Moon in there, some Spike Troublemaker, some villains, mm -hmm. some crazy stuff here. I mean, you say that, grandpa's, and yet, like, the fact that it is completely singleton makes me think, like, you know, uh, this is clearly a intentional, a conscious effort. Yes, uh, this is not just someone pulling together everything they've got, trying to build a deck with it. Like, even the problem deck is completely singleton. <laughs> even the main completely singleton. So this one stray gummy is like out of all cards you could pick, it's a gummy. And it's it's uh let me see here. This deck starts well we've got a choice of equalist, walking tree, talking lesson plans, that's ours. So it probably starts uh Either equal or lucky most of them. In which case, I'm using okay pull on like the turn two or whatever. You move Luna, it comes out. Then you're only I, sorry, two power short of confronting. I think you would start with under the look and tree here so you can play most of your cards because a lot of them are too wrecked. Oh right. That's a better point. And you have to move Luna anyway, so yeah. Yeah, and it's it's functionally the same confront requirement. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that works. Like I think lacking lesson plants is there against Tempest, but in all other cases you'll probably peak under the local country. Let me just count up real quick. How much how much how much entry we actually have here? Okay. 
Oh shoot, there's pink in here too, actually. Uh, there's one pink card in its entry, isn't it? Yeah. So I think they're like as far as entry is concerned, you're only worried about blue. Pretty much, yeah. And there's four blue cards with one wreck and fifteen blue cards with uh two wreck. Oh well, there you go. So yeah. The math, the math works out, you'll have an okay start. There's the singleton stick as well. You managed to find yeah. it. I love Double Diamond. Like, it's a card that you don't need to play. Hmm. I think this deck is neat. I wouldn't call it just a pile of cards. Like, being all single is definitely an intentional decision. And I think the way it's made it yeah. uh, quite good for what it's trying to do. And I mean, the, the, the deck did get third place in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we find its record here, that was three and two. Or, yeah, three and two. I would say it was clearly doing something, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, let me see here. Uh, I'm... After Everfree, how much should we talk about the animator uh, deck that won that tournament? Uh, we did talk about it, but I don't remember how much. But we did talk about it, that's for sure. Oh, well, okay. I, I, I'm just always... I don't know. I, I kind of have a soft spot for uh, pages. Um, <laughs> you know, after Poppy, after Wesley. I mean, we can bring it up for sure. Sure. I don't mind talking about it again. So he did win Vancouver uh, with, I believe this is the exact same list that was run at Everfree. Oops, all bombs, as it's known. Um, yeah. At least it fits on the screen. Uh, yes, that's true. We're, uh, we're gonna have to make some adjustments, I guess. If I mean, Singleton could potentially become a format in the future now that Harmony's got enough cards in it. Mm hmm. But our infrastructure is gonna have to improve with that ever the case. It's okay, we'll adjust. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, like I say, I, I think this is. Very close, actually. I'm the guy with the spreadsheet for the deck list. I can just figure out if it's exactly the same. Uh, it is not the same deck list as Ryan had ever. Was that Torch before? I think Torch is new. Don't uh, remember Torch no, before? Torch was there. Let me see. Uh, he's Okay, so the one at Everfree had a single uh, Princess Cadence Crystal Princess. Oh, right, yeah, I remember that. Troublemaker's Canton Tower there. Yes. Which has been turned into. Why is it that? It has been turned into another evil twin. The old version had just a single evil. Which is okay. Yeah, that's, that works. It makes sense if you don't expect as many troublemakers. Because the the cadence is pretty good if you like if pretty much everyone plays Nightmare Moon. Yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually a really good point. And, and looking from the to the other decks, no one played a single Troublemaker. Yep, right. not a single other deck ran Troublemaker. So that change makes total sense. Hmm. One card, but it makes a big difference. 
especially given the way this deck plays, where kind of just throwing stuff into the discard pile, and then later on you play your redeeming qualities or whatever, and it's your choice what you put into it. So, mm -hmm. Even just a single copy can matter a lot. All in all, yeah. Yeah, I think that I'd, uh, I'd love to see action more often. I think we only well. All right. Uh, well, as you said, the season is not over yet. So yeah, absolutely. I think we only saw this once. At, at... Uh, we saw it before, but it wasn't Pages who played it. That's right. Okay. I think it was at Vancouver in January. Uh, or maybe at BAPS uh, Harmony event. I don't remember, but we definitely saw it before uh, free, I remember. Hang on a second. Uh, okay. Once again, I'm the guy with the spreadsheet, I can tell you. Uh, uh, indeed, yes. And Hoover, way back at the start of the year. It didn't have a name back then, from what I remember, though. No, yeah. And looking at it, yeah, it, it looks largely the same. A little bit rougher around the edges. The, the idea was there. Mm hmm OK. Well, touched a little bit on foreign harmony. Let's Shuffle over to Defender's Block, shall we? OK. Mono yellow? <laughs> I mean, yeah. We uh, can't really mention Defender's Block without talking about mono yellow. Now we take, uh, well, let me see. We've got, oh, we've got, well, OK. We've got three people playing mono yellow. I think they all played the same deck, probably. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I know they. Like they announced their decks in advance and they said like they might make change up to free cards. But I'm fairly sure they didn't change anything and they are all running the same deck. Hmm. Well, this is yes. This is Cheese's list, for what it's worth. If there are any changes, this I just I, I just clicked on Cheese's thing. So, uh, so all the good stuff from yellow is still there. Pretty much. And as much as like like to say that like since the yellow, as we talked in the previous stream, pretty much didn't lose nothing, it's the strongest deck in Defender's block right now. But since three out of the four decks I see played mono yellow, I, like I can't really draw that conclusion just because the meta there is oversaturated with this deck in the sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If everybody plays it, then clearly it's going to be the best. Yeah. But not, uh, yeah, it doesn't mean there's something better out there. Absolutely. Like my blue purple list. <laughs> are are we going to have results from? Oh wait, no, we did, didn't we? Or well, not defenders, but there was a Moscow something Is there. Uh, I didn't post them yet because our Star Championships was was quite a bumpy road. I actually had to host them just today, and I have yeah, and we had only three people, so okay. it's it's been quite terrible this month for everyone. So, but it's okay. I I will post them after the stream. I just didn't have time because you know I just got home. Okay, that's fine. But Maybe. I won them. <laughs> sure. And so and and you did play. Uh, like, I played the uh, silver stream combo. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, we, we played harmony. Yeah. Harmony. Okay. That's fair. Maybe I should have expected, or at least uh, <laughs> I should have expected some some kind of combo out of you. Uh, well, yeah, we're kind of making time uh, because there isn't much to say about uh, a deck that's been. As you said, talked about a lot by other people. Uh, yeah, and we kind of touched on it like last time. So, 
We didn't talk about the deck, this particular deck before, but yellow in general in Defender's Block. Mm -hmm. And this is basically an essence of, the, of what we talked about before. We can look at Sonnet's list, though, which is not a mono yellow. Well, that's right. Sonnet's list was kind of cool. It did still have yellow, but it's not. It also had your favorite card, so we should definitely talk about it. It's true, it did. It didn't have any troublemakers in it. Oh. Yeah. Neither did her opponents, so. Mm -hmm. hmm. Fair point. Uh, but yeah, we're kind of. Let's see here. I think. Obviously, you're talking about strawberry with the, uh, the yellow. A little bit of orange, a little bit of white, a little bit of purple. Um, I think I would call this mid range as well, but it's definitely on the control y side. Yeah. There's a lot of eccentric here. Mm hmm. Up to and including the eccentric four uh, from Sky Star. Yeah, which is also hasty, a pretty good control tool. And you transform the other Sky Star, which dismisses things. So, hmm. which is the only other Sky Star in the deck? Uh, yes. So, yeah, you play an offensive dismissal Sky Star into that trans. But you've got, uh, you've got how many AT sources? Starlight and Zakora. Yeah. So AT is not a huge concern. Yeah, it's it's better than not having that AT. And from what I see, this is pretty much the reason why it was splashed into purple for AT Gen and Luna's future. Mm -hmm. uh, mysterious disappearance as well is a little. Oh yeah, nice that's true. Have. Yeah. As an immediate resource removal. Sunset Festival is an interesting card. The last time it was talked about in terms of disrupting chaos control. There's no chaos control in Defender's Block. Yeah. I mean, if you're expecting... Like, against yellow, it's not great, right? Because you're just going to get some small... Oh, actually. Uh, you might get day shifts or uh, yeah. remove their middle brook because Sunset Festival is basically a removal mm -hmm. in a way that you take that friend so they don't get it. So if you get middle brook, that means that middle brook won't be used against you. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't dismiss anything with her, it's still pretty good. Getting bunny is yeah. also pretty fun. It's true. Like, there's, well, Against any deck, there's always going to be a, a high roll of pulling out Miss Main or Bunyip or um, anything. Old Monk yeah. or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the worst card you can get from Mono Yellow is Gummy. Uh, yes. That's it. Actually, Yona is a great pull. That's she's persistent. Mm -hmm. Like any persistent friend is pretty. Oh, wait, no. Hang on a second. Because when the card is frightened, does the control modifier fall off? Ah, uh, yeah, they will take it back. Okay. Take it back. Okay, so persistent isn't the greatest thing. Yeah, you'd rather have a leaf play, probably. But you still get swift and the uh, triggered ability. Yeah, actually, yeah. As Grandpa points out, that's why Bunny isn't the greatest thing yet either. Yeah, that's true. It's still an extra point. Mm -hmm. for a point. And besides, like like I said about Middlebrook, uh, you might get that Bunny but not use it. Like, just don't use its ability and they won't get it. Yes, you won't get any points from him, but you're denying them to like mm -hmm. having a Brian. So still, uh, I mean, Bunny. still a one power swift friend. Yeah. 
but that's good. No, I actually, you know, uh, this being defender's block, there's no, uh, well, there's no controls as far as we know, but I realize that uh, strawberry has, a, has an interesting application if, uh, if, if the opponent plays a villain and then, like, plays underneath it, you can actually flip it to fight and all their stuff. Yeah, but there are no villains in Defender's yeah, Block, yeah, so... Yeah, it, it, it's true. Like, that's not an application in uh, Defender's yeah. Block. It's just, oh, that's another cool thing you can do with Strawberry. Uh -huh. There's a lot of cool things you can do with Strawberry Ring. It's, it's uh, a neat card. I know. I, I, I have an unhealthy obsession. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't tell that to you. You already know. I'm kind of surprised to not see any main six here. Since it's not banned in Defenders, why just, just throw a couple here, or at least one? Yeah, that's actually a fair point. Uh, is that pink? It is pink. You would... I mean, there's no... There's no... Retirement outlet to get rid of everything, but even then... Main 6 sometimes is, is okay. Yeah, like, it's... 5VT pretty much guarantee yourself a face-off in many cases. And there's still belly flop, so it can act as a huge berry punch. Well, if you play main six, they won't have anything to... Uh, oh, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, eh, it could be worth um, inclusion. Especially since it's Make use of those main sixes while you can. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, next yeah. deck. Ah, uh, well. Do you have something to talk about? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. That might be, be all the fun. All the fun. Let me let me look, take a look myself. There was uh, I don't have Illinois for this. There's Tempest Multicolor, which runs a lot of alicorns. Yeah, alicorn aggro. It's not like it is kind of Alicorn aggro, but it also yeah. doesn't run a lot of Alicorn. Oh, like, wait, there's. Hang on, hang on. This is not Alicorn. This is Alicorn. Oh. Or, well, it, it's. It's Dratas deck. Yeah, but it's. it's Yeah, it's Dratas deck, but this is a melding. I'm actually. I actually am going to it. It reminds me of. It's got like the original Alicorn stem, but it kind of has like Tempest Blue attached to it. So. It's a mill deck? Oh, a mill. Yeah, I am not sure. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. This is like a weird mix of uh, Tempest Blue and Alicorns. But yeah, functionally, it should work. And it, it did work, since it was the first place out of eight people, yeah, which is way better than my first place out of three people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Midwestern uh, events did have the largest fields um, of the whole, well, out of anything I've seen reported so far. So, first place is worth it. Um, but yeah, I basically, stuff from the original Alicorn list, I, it, it actually makes sense when you think about it, because Flash Century, obviously, old Alicorn list, but Daybreaker comes from the uh, Tempest Blue list. Good thought. Um, 
And yeah, they actually work together pretty well. And you end up with a mid-range that probably either you draw your alicorns, and then you say, okay, we're playing aggro this game, and we're mm -hmm. going to have a pretty fearsome uh, play of it. Play that old uh, alicorn list used to. Or else yep. you uh, take the more mid-range you control route. Hopefully it does that pretty well. Yep, and what's interesting about this is that you don't care that much about Flash Sentry. Like, if you don't get, get Flash Sentry, you still have other things to do other than Alicorns. And there's a lot of AT Gen here. Yep, Starlight Dandu, uh, Dandu Poster. Uh, oh, wow, and Cup of Cup, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. And in a way, Flash Sentry. Yeah, pretty cool. I would like to see this being played. I'd, it'd be interesting to see if like our uh, thoughts about how this plays are correct or not. Absolutely. Uh, now even the problem that we've got a mix. Easy to confront ones, some hard to confront ones. I would say this is just a regular Tempest Blue problem deck. Huh. Well, except on the case, I guess. Well, on the case is great for troublemaker control, but if, if you're going more mid range you probably wouldn't want that, mm -hmm. since it's really hard to confront. Yeah. But other than that, this is just a traditional things that I would expect in Tempest Blue control-ish. Mm -hmm. That's actually, I, uh, I mean, this, this is actually really cool. And perhaps sometime in the fall, we'll have time to uh, see this in person. <laughs> perhaps. All right, well. Oh, I know a deck I haven't seen before. Okay. So called Selena List. <laughs> uh, the Fender's version? Or the. I don't know. Are they different? <laughs> uh, let me quickly. Uh, yes, they are. Well, they should. no. Wait. So the version that I see. Oh wait. Oh, oh, oh that's right. This doesn't. This doesn't. Purple sand. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same for defender sand, core. But yeah, I was mostly joking about the fact that yeah, oh, no, Sokol still plays the same thing. <laughs> I absolutely understood that. I mean, it uh, still works. Yeah, I mean, I play my blue-purple thing all the time, so I can't blame him. And his deck is really cool. I still think it's a really cool deck. And like, it's actually really great that he plays it all the time because we get to see how it evolves over time. Yeah. Like if you look back at like a year ago at Babscon where he, I think that that was the first time we saw it. Mm -hmm. It was quite different from what we see now, and I think that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. I I think like I I actually um, grappled with it a little bit again for the classification. Um, as far as as far as Tia is concerned, this is actually a different deck now. Uh, I call it mid-range now, of aggro. Um, really? I, I mean, I, I don't think that you can have mimics in an aggro deck just in general. Um, 
Yeah, I guess you can make that point. Yeah, but mm, I mean, if you're like running this troublemaker like sub farming thing, might as well run mimics because it's just such a good troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's an open question as far as I'm concerned, but the deck has, or like again, it, it'd be a lot easier if I was in the uh, in the locals with him and I could see how this deck actually played. Mm -hmm. But it's it certainly looks to me like it's been getting slower as it's uh, developed. It's got a little bit more controlly, less aggro. Yeah, I suppose that's true because before Ricky had pretty much all those point acceleration things and trying to like rush through the game as fast as possible by either by flipping Selena or, or some other point acceleration and right now it's less of that more of other things so yeah I guess you have a point but it, it still goes to your point earlier that uh, yeah it, it's been really cool to watch the deck kind of evolve and um, mm -hmm. Take on a, a new personality of sorts as as the meta has changed around it. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I uh, I think that basically lost everything that I wanted to get to. Yeah, I see some other decks, but we've talked about them before. Like, there's some Poppy there, there's some Tempest White Pink, there's some Tempest White Blue. Uh, all the stuff we've seen from the previous conventions and things like that. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, as mentioned, I mean, I'll, I've been doing the numbers all week. And I, Expect to have the trends out uh, by today. Uh, I'll try to incorporate your results when you can get them. Yeah, uh, I, like I will post them as soon as I get the uh, uh, deck lists and link form. Okay, gotcha. from the players. Yeah, it sure. should be soon, like within the next hours. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, so look forward to that. Um, otherwise, two weeks from now. Well, let's see. Week from now is the twenty-first. Ah, uh, yeah. It is right before BronyCon. Ah, uh, Galacon. Or yeah, sorry. Is uh, is uh, Galacon the same weekend or is it earlier? Uh, it's or? earlier. It's end of July, the last weekend of July. The twenty-eighth. Uh, I see. Twenty-seventh and twenty-eighth. Right. And we'll probably have some preview information to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, uh, if you know anybody who wanted to catch the stream but couldn't, or you busy, etc. Oh, uh, Hypno Hooves, sorry, I didn't see you there in the chat. Uh, do we have? Uh, I, I don't think we have UK results. Like, I haven't seen them. I know UK store championships happened, mm -hmm. at least in Craydon. Uh, because my friend Angie was there, and Angie played his uh, all in the control deck where he basically had smoothes and he puts count power counters on them to like block the game off. But from what I heard, a lot of people played. Uh, I think there was a farm deck there. I think there was some aggro decks there, and I, he told me that there were a lot of nightmare moves there. <laughs> that was his impressions, but I don't know the actual results. I haven't seen them posted yet, right. neither in the UK Facebook group or on Reddit. Right. Uh, yeah, well, I, I certainly appreciate, yeah, same as you. I, I haven't seen anything in any sort of official or semi-official places. Uh, so I certainly appreciate seeing results, uh, whether they be mm -hmm. from the UK or from Russia or Forever. Um, They're coming soon. I know. Uh, so yeah, you know, if 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 you have Manchester, I don't, you know, uh, send it up on Reddit or uh, be on Discord or uh, whatever, and I'll I'll put it into account. Sure.
Um, yeah, so I uh, was going to the YouTube spiel. Um, yeah, game will be up on YouTube probably in a couple of hours. Uh, to get post to follow. Meantime, I've been Chris Accords. And I've been Hufrock. And uh, we'll see you on a fortnight. Bye.